The education niche is huge and it's worth trillions of dollars and you can also get into it. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator B and welcome to our channel where we show you how to make money online with low content products like KDP low content books, printables and digital planners. So in this video, I am going to go through one particular niche inside of the education niche. And the reason why I'm doing that is because there is a worksheet generator that is being launched on Friday. And quite honestly, this is a game changer. So as we can see with this, this is only for the US that the US education industry is worth $1.1 trillion. And that was back in 2020. And it is now set to earn a revenue of nearly $2.3 trillion by 2028. Now, education can be from any age and in any subject. It doesn't just mean uh, aimed at young children or students going to school. It can also mean those that are career changers or those that need to improve on their own uh, career. So maybe an engineer that needs to learn something more or somebody that's learning a new skill that will give them a better job prospect or make them self-employed. So it's, it is a huge area. So let's go and check out Amazon because what we're going to do is we're going to look at the maths niche. Now I'm saying math, which is the US, and then maths is for the UK. So we're going to look at both markets. So first and foremost, you'll see when you go on to Amazon.com at the moment, it actually gives us back to school. It says supplies for all grades and you'll see back to school. That's because the US, uh, they're going through the summer holidays and they're now getting ready to go back to school. Whereas in the UK, the schools are just about to break up this week. Some schools may have broken up last week, but they tend to break up now. And a lot of parents and grandparents and childminders and anybody that's looking after kids often give them stuff to do over the summer holidays, whether it's worksheets, um, whether it's drilling things, whether it's counting things. Just because school has stopped doesn't mean that learning has stopped as well. So let's go and have a look at the niche and the niche is maths. Now, again, if you're looking at different niches to go into, you need to know all the information. So with maths, it again, every grade or every year group needs to know different things. So for kindergarten, they need to know how to rote count, rote count up to 10. And then by grade one and two, they need to be knowing how to do that with 20 up to 20. They need to be knowing how to do addition and subtraction, and they need to be understanding basic math language, like more than, less than, and things like that. So you need to be able to do that as well. So if I can type in just the keyword math, you'll see that this populates and that is because I've got one of the plugins that tells me. So I've got math manipulatives, I've got math flashcards. Now we can't create flashcards to go on KDP, but you can create them to go on to say Etsy or to Teachers Pay Teachers or to put them on your own site and sell them as printables. Because you can create books, workbooks, printables and digital activity books to actually sell. So we've got those flashcards. We've also can create games like printable games that people cut out and then they they can play them. We can also create games that you can put onto um, Google Sheets and things like that. There's always ways of making things interactive. Then it tells us that there are workbooks and it tells us that there are different grades. So grade one, two, three and four. I think it mentions kindergarten on there somewhere. It does math and reading for kindergarten. It also says something about math with confidence. Now that might be a trademark. So you would have to check using that word with confidence. Uh, math for dummies. Again, the for dummies books are trademark and they're usually by Wiley Publications. So again, I wouldn't use that. Maths for kindergarten is fine, first grade, for kids, second grade. But you also get maths for adults. So for an example, we can see maths for meds, maths for adults. 
So we've got a huge amount of keywords there, toddlers, kindergarten, preschool, confidence, learning resources. But we can also break it down into not just maths, we can learn it down into different types of maths. So we can do the different operations like addition and subtraction. So we can put and subtraction and we can click on, say, workbook and then go in and see what types of workbooks are created. Now, it does tell us that there's over 2000. But again, you could actually break that down. You can actually see the low BSRs on these. Now, you also will notice that some of them price their books really low, and that's because they are getting the volumes. That's what they're aiming at. They're aiming at the volume sales. So they've been doing this for a long time. This book's been out since 2019, and it is BSR is 19,707. So why haven't other people stepped into it? Because it takes hard work. It takes hard work to actually create these types of books. You need some sort of software or you can use Excel and then save the images. That's the sort of thing I did when I tried to create these books back in 2020. And the reason why I didn't carry on is because it just took too long. Instead of a book taking me a couple of weeks to create, it was taking me a couple of months, which quite frankly, I felt was too long. And so does most of the other people, whereas a couple of them like this one here, this one here and uh, this one here as well, Modern Kid Press, they kept going and they've kept creating books and they've grown their brand inside of the uh, education niche. So they've covered this one here has covered maths, completely done a lot of maths. And not only that, they've done lots of maths where they break it down into the difference. So they'll do double digits, single digits, triple digits, and also the different ones like addition, subtraction, multiplication, step multiplication, linear multiplication, fractions, long division, short division, if you can be called that. I don't think it is. Um, so th there's all sorts of things. But not only is it difficult to create these books, it's also you've got to understand what the different ones are. So I typed in for the Common Core State Standard Initiative because in the US you need they need to follow this Common Core. So you need to know what students need for each grade. So it tells you here operations and algebraic thinking, number and operations to the base of 10. So you know that you need to be what numbers you need to be working on and what you need to actually aim for. So that's a good idea. Now, now in the UK, it's a different market. So I believe that you need to actually create two books, one for the US market and one for the UK market. Why do I say that? Because in the US, they work with grades K, K to 12, whereas in UK, we work with early years and then we have key stage one, two, all the way up to key stage five. And then we also have something else that's called functional skills as well. So that's another market as well that you can be creating for. And so I would create one book for the US where you put um, addition. It's the same sort of additions and subtractions and that, but it's just your keywords and everything's different. And you wouldn't put math, you would put maths because that's what we say here in the UK. In fact, everywhere else in the world other than the US do we say math. You could probably get away with it by typing mathematics and do it that way, but you would lose space with your with your images. Now I have seen some books do well in both markets and this is one that does well in both markets. So I have seen that. So if I go to amazon.co you'll see now that must be Chris's book Ray Dog, Ray Dog Maths. So he's just doing really well in the UK market. Again he's done 160 pages of time maths for grade Two. So he's going on to one specific grade. He's not aimed at any other grade. So he is narrowing down and being really niched. So he's doing digits zero to 20, which is the requirement up to grade two. And then you'll see the other books are mainly uh, not independently published. They are like Collins, um, 
this one they've given themselves two names us and uk so and this they've mentioned that they key stage two maths so they've probably got a us one as well that actually says the grade rather than key stage so they've done the two collins again that's a big uh, education company for books and dictionaries and things like that their maths here so They've called themselves maths. So you'll see that some, but they do actually mention key stage two and years three to four. So they've changed it so that it is for the UK market maths challenge. And the same with this one here as well. This one says the big book of maths and says the grades. So this is, they've spent money on actual advertisements in the UK, but it's not naturally just populating there because they haven't got the UK keywords. This one as well, this is actually is populated here, but I think it's because the price is really cheap. So that's the reason why, and they probably have run ads in the past, which have led to sales in the UK, hence the reason it's in the UK market. So again, here, key stage one, and how do you get all this information so you know what you're actually doing? Well, if you type in on Google, usually early years mass requirement, DFE, DFE is the Department for Education and it'll take you to the gov.uk site. So I have clicked on all of these and it tells me the framework. It's quite a big read through. If you download the framework, you can see. So early years is the things before pre-K. Then stage one is um, the young kids. So again, I've actually downloaded this mathematics uh, key stage one and key stage two and it actually tells me what they need to know about shapes, sizes, what language they need to be doing, year two they need to count in steps of two, three, five, so two, four, six, eight, three, six, nine and so on and five, ten, fifteen, twenty and it tends from any number forward and backwards. So they need to recognize different things. They need to understand what less than is, more than is, and equal to. So they know the different operations. So you can do that. Now, also, the UK has what's called functional skills. This is aimed at people often who haven't passed their GCSE in maths or um, they've not done any education stuff for years, and now they're going on to some further training and they need to know different things. So there's three level entries for functional skills and these different requirements and there are books out there and printables out there aimed at functional skills so that people can learn more, understand more, have practice runs as well. And then also on Etsy, you'll see that there's lots of early learning year stuff, printables and things like that, but there's also maths worksheets that you can be selling so these are similar to what you can create with the new generator that is coming out same with this one now like I said before I tried to do all this in fact I did do it and published a book and I do get some sales I don't actually run any adverts to that and I do actually get sales but this is what I use <laughs> I created myself a spreadsheet. I did different ones. I did addition and subtraction, uh, zero to five and five to zero and um, went up from five to nine and all sorts of different things. But I had a lot of issues and I did go up to 60. But often sums would repeat themselves. So then I'd have to recreate, I'd have to reset it going. So you can see three plus zero, three plus zero and it comes down here, three plus zero is repeated, and it's going to keep repeating. But you don't want that in a book. So it took me ages to go through them. I'd generate them, I'd export them as PNGs, put them inside of PowerPoint, and then I'd have to go back, and if they were wrong, I'd have to redo that particular one, and then I'd have to redo the solutions. Oh, it was just a headache, and took me weeks and weeks, and I was so pleased when I'd finally finished the book. So when Nareen Jin came to me and said that they were creating this math worksheet generator, I was like, oh yes, I definitely want to test that out. So I will be doing a full review about the math work generator 
math worksheet generator, should I say. I'll be showing you how to use it and how to create books. I'll also be creating a number of different bonuses if you purchase through my link. So like I say, education is huge and I'm only showing you one small niche in it, which is maths. And again, maths can be broken down into either age groups or into particular subject areas like fat, fractions, decimals, algebra and how many digits and multiplication and all that. In fact, it's huge and it can be worth a huge lot of money. As you can see, a lot of these that create uh, worksheets are star sellers. They sell a number of these. So this one's got 44 reviews. This one here has got 140 reviews. So they do actually sell. So if they've got 44 reviews in their store, they have probably sold 440 of these worksheets on average, because only on average 10% of the people leave a review. So that is how it works. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscription button to be notified about any other videos I make.